<laughs> Good evening. Welcome. We are live. We are so excited, everybody. We have our first group blogger panel about holiday prep. We're super excited to be here. Um, if you're new and you don't know us, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're back, of course, a huge welcome too. Uh, we are a little with great love and we are a group of bloggers that are seeking to share stories and bringing people back to Christ for restoration and healing. So we are going to be talking all about the good holiday stuff tonight. And there are four of us on the screen, but there are six of us total. And so some of us will be popping on and off um, as we go through and just be able to kind of share with you guys um, from our hearts tonight about what the heck we're doing for the holidays. So um, before we introduce ourselves and get started, um, I want to invite Tammy to lead us in prayer. All right, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us here tonight I thank you for all of the women and the men that will watch this talk tonight. Lord, that you will draw them into your most sacred heart, that they will find something in our talk tonight that calls them on to greater holiness, that allows them to experience you in a deeper way through these holidays. Lord, that your work of healing will always be done and will always be on the forefront of our minds, that we live our lives for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got a lively crew tonight. We are going to go around and introduce ourselves. So I'll kick off and just share that I'm Lisa Martinez. I'm the founder of Little With Great Love. And I, um, I live in Austin, Texas. My husband and I are here. So we are the family of two, and so I'll be sharing about how we enter into the holidays as a couple. Um, Michelle. Okay, I'm Michelle Hilliard. I'm in Front Row, Virginia, and I have uh, married for 20 years, have six children, and just really blessed to be here tonight. My husband and I have our podcast, Catholic Family Uncorked, and it's really amazing to be able to be um, connected with ministry, but to be able to participate with these amazing ladies so i'm super excited to be here tonight with these beautiful women and just to, to be present with you thank you we are super excited too and now tammy tammy mccarthy i live about 45 minutes um north of uh oh we lost someone 45 minutes north of philadelphia and pennsylvania um, I'm extremely cold, thus my Christmas sweater. Um, I am. I will be married 20 years this summer, and I have five children. So I will be talking from um, a perspective of, you know, getting the kids involved in the holidays, and um, and how, what that prep looks like. I'm also um, currently moving. So my whole house is being settled December 17th. So the holidays look a little different for us this year. So we'll talk a little bit about what we've done in the past and how it looks different now. Oh boy, we got it cut out for us, right? <laughs> All right, girl, thanks. Um, and now we're gonna have Bridget. Hi, I'm Bridget Holtz. Um, I'm in my 40s. Here in Austin, um, Lisa and I have known each other for 20 years. That um, we were embryos, yeah. This is true. We were embryonic <laughs> friends. Um, I will, I'm single, um, been single my entire life. Um, I've had the chance to move around and do a lot of international uh, work as well. So I'm excited that I've had kind of a multicultural uh, experience of Advent and the holidays and the Christmas, I should say. Um, I'm a mom of two dogs. Um, and uh, I, as I mentioned, I live pretty close to, to Lisa. So I'll be just speaking from the perspective of my experience growing up in an ecumenical um, Christian community. And then also as a practicing Catholic 
who is active um, and uh, I'm an ICU nurse. So um, I have a lot of exposure to patients and families that may not be having the, the best um, holiday experience. So I look forward to hearing questions, sharing my perspective, sharing my experience and also learning from everybody. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Bridget. And now we will have Danielle. Hey, everybody. Danielle here, a little with great love. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Uh, my perspective is coming from, because I have a boyfriend, um, I have a 127 pound dog. Um, <laughs> and I think most of my stories or most of my traditions that I'd love to share are from growing up with family. Uh, I come from a really large family, so it was always a lot going on, a lot of activity, a lot of food, um, as well as some like special spiritual things in the last few years that have been important to me during Advent. So uh, excited to be here with you guys and to share. Awesome, we love it. Thank you, Danielle. And now, Alyssa. Hey, everyone, it's Alyssa. I'm joining y'all from Florida, where it's <laughs> nice and sunny, and we just got a cool front, so it's cold somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Cold. What, 72? <laughs> to Florida cold. So, you know, I have my long sleeves out. And, um, yeah, I'm 23 years old, and I'm just joining in, giving the 23-year-old perspective. Um, I recently, there's you're going to see a blog about this um, from me, about how the holidays are changing as I get older, where I reflect on my traditions of what possibly my future could look like, um, stuff that's changing as everyone in my family is getting older, all the kiddos are growing up. So I share about that on the blog. So I'm happy to share that with you guys here tonight. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yay, we're happy to have you all here. So you can see that we are a pretty diverse group. We've kind of covering the gambit here. So we will get your question a lot of questions and comments. Oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. Okay, sorry about that. Did that fix it? Is that okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. There was a an echo that I'm like, no, we can only have four of us on the screen. So having five talking is a good idea. <laughs> okay, so, okay. so we um, we're gonna go through a little bit, just a, a few quick like housekeeping things. Um, we have some um, downloads for you guys, and so um, the first one that we have is a gratitude pack. And that is an awesome pack that we really did for Lisa. the month of November. Yeah. You're continuing to echo. Is I it? think it has something to do with Michelle. Because when you came on, it started. Lisa. How's that? Is that okay? okay. Maybe. I don't hear a, I don't hear anything. I don't hear it. Okay. So we'll try to keep going. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes, you know, technology. Huh? <laughs> um, so, uh, so we're doing uh, a couple of downloads that we're going to, Alyssa's going to share. She'll be taking Q&A over there. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to type those. There's an ask the question uh, prompt at the bottom of the screen that you can put something in there. There's also that awesome little chat panel on the side, so you guys can use that and just um, put comments like uh, Safana at Laugh Out Loud, uh, 127 pound dog, <laughs> uh, whatever things that you guys wanna do. Also, if you have some good uh, resources that you wanna share or any ideas, please put them there and we can you know, talk about those as well. So um, the gratitude check that we have um, designed for November is available if you hit the donate at the bottom. So we, um, one of our sisters, Kelly, who was gonna be here tonight, unfortunately there was a, um, a work emergency that um, called her away last minute. Um, we, she is part of um, a beautiful ministry that's in Southern Louisiana. 
which is actually um, supporting those in great need in Vermillion Parish. Um, so they have a women's recovery, um, or women's resource center, sorry. And that really does like everything from like meals to, um, you know, supplies to diapers and all of that, that um, parenting classes, things like that for people that um, are living in poverty. So um, all the donations from that, um, there's 40 plus downloads in the gratitude pack. You can hit the um, donate button there and that will then go, you know, all of the proceeds are going to go um, to help support that. So welcome to the folks from um, Louisiana. It's good to see you guys with us. And um, we'd love to support that great cause. Um, I think especially like around the holidays, we kind of think about doing um, maybe going to the soup kitchen, helping out and all of that. And we'll talk more about COVID um, as we go through the panel here. But with maybe us not being able to go out and do some of these type of things, it's awesome to like just be able to give to a um, Christian Catholic organization that you know is going to really support the people that need it. So, um, so that's the first thing, the first download. And Alyssa put that in the um, a link to that, and then also in the donate. And then the second one is the Advent um, packet that we did. So I did a 2020 at a planning guide. And that's also available. We'll put a link up there as well. It's a free download, you guys, so you can go. Um, there's tons of resources in there, like over 25 different things you could do for Advent, from like books, activities, to retreats online, um, all you know, podcasts, all that kind of stuff. And then there's um, a like overview of the liturgical calendar with all the different feast days, and then the week by week kind of planning guide to help lead you through um, what we're going to, you know, these are ideas to do for week one. These are ideas to do for week two, three, four, um, so that it kind of helps us to uh, not get overwhelmed <laughs> by the season, but it gives us a little bit of a, of a plan to go through it and do it a little bit more peacefully so we can get it into the liturgical season a little bit better. So those are good for you guys. And if you're a procrastinator like me, those will be invaluable for you. <laughs> Right? right? Yeah. So us planners can help the procrastinators and even some of us planners are procrastinators. So it's really complex. Um, um, but all those things we want to help us and um, enter into that season a little bit better. Um, so the first thing that you know, we wanted to share was like why we're doing this and why we felt called to do um, this panel discussion with us uh, the first time that we're doing this all together. Um, because it's been a difficult year. Um, we've had a lot of challenges this year. And so we've been kind of as a team trying to dig deep a little bit um, more. We posted a gratitude video today, the first time that all, all seven of us um, shot a video and put that together for you guys. That's on the blog, littlebitgreatlove.com. And we are really trying to then usher into the end of this year and figure out how can we do that um, by not just trying to rush through it and not just getting caught up in the stress of it, um, but how can we do it in a way that uh, just is being more present in the moment and then also to um, just be more helpful, less stress, right, guys? What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> so, the gratitude video is up there. There's a link to that. And then we want to talk also a little bit about um, our holidays. You know, what does that look like for each of us? So um, what do the holidays mean to us? And we can kind of kick it off with Michelle. Let me unmute myself. <laughs> I think you were saying we like, like review ourselves in between because those feedback are, uh, comes through for some reason. But, um, yeah, no, I love the holidays. Honestly, um, I know we're going to dig into different aspects of that, so I'm going to try not to go too much at once and make me drink from a fountain. But um, our family really digs in and leans in as a unit. So me, myself, my husband, Trent, Joseph, he just got back from Christmas Kid University. We're so excited. He's here for Thanksgiving um, and brought his, uh, his friends. And uh, we've got all of my, my, my four daughters, Bridget, Nicole, Maisie, Jack, 
or Jacqueline and um, Augie, my youngest son. And, and we just do a lot of stuff to build memories, to draw closer to Christ. And really, um, again, just to lean in as a unit versus um, constantly uh, connecting with our extended family which is something that we started doing earlier. But that's just like the high level overview. I don't know how deep we want to go right off the bat. So I'll pass it off and I'm pretty sure we're going to dive over these. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. That's a great overview. Um, that's, I think, a good point. Um, we'll just give ourselves a little bit chance to dig in a bit deeper. So Tammy, why don't you just kind of give us the high level view? holidays with the McCarthy's. Well, I'm going to say from starters, if you could mute me, because I can't find that on my phone. So if I'm not talking, if you could mute me, that would be great. Um, so the McCarthy's day. So I'm super excited to talk about holidays. As you can tell, I'm wearing my ugly sweater um, from our holiday party last year. And, you know, the holidays are looking a little different for the McCarthy's this year than they have in the past. Um, we recently sold our home, and um, the holidays for us really take weeks. We start with a lot of Advent prep, and um, our Christmas extends for a long time. So kind of had to have a big conversation with my kids and say, look at all these Christmas decorations. They really will not be coming out this year. So that's kind of, we're kind of in a tough spot. So I think a lot of you who may be dealing with different things with COVID could, you know, maybe find yourself understanding where our family is kind of coming from in that we're having to keep everything simple this year. There's a lot of simplicity and we're able to just really hone in on making this season about, about loving each other and about making sure that we are giving each other the greatest gift that we can. And that's, that's the coming of the Christ child and how we can prepare our hearts and not so much our home this year for that. That's a little bit different. How are the kids dealing with that? Um, well, my kids tend to do very well with change. And I think that we have really just done so much every year that in talking with them, you know, um, we haven't actually bought our home yet. So we kind of likened it to us being the Israelites who are spending 40 years in the desert until the promised land. So we've been really pushing the, the adventure part of this of this house move so it'll be interesting it'll be interesting so we were able to kind of throw this throw christmas into uh into our desert experience all right okay. Thank you. check it out as real lights move out <laughs> okay um bridget why don't you share about a little bit overview of the holidays what they look like for you yeah, so um, I moved away from home many years ago. Um, I've spent some holidays on the international front. Um, and so the holidays for me generally involve some sort of a travel back to my folks' house in Michigan. Um, this year, I am still currently planning to travel home for Christmas uh, unless, you know, restrictions and COVID decide that um, other things will be in place. Um, but for me, uh, you know, it used to be all about the presents. I admit it. I mean, even as a little Catholic girl, we would, you know, we would read the Luke chapter two and everybody would just be like right there waiting to grab the first gift. Um, but, uh, through my thirties and now into my forties, it's much more important to me to emphasize, um, giving of myself and giving of ourselves. Um, and I know personally, um, I have challenges with depression and um, I know that for a huge number of folks, it can be a tremendously lonely time of year, especially this year uh, when so much has been removed from us. So the reaching out, the including, the checking in, the um, ability to be generous, which, you know, I'm blessed with a steady job right now, so I'm able to do that. Uh, but really it, remembering and making sure that those in my life feel remembered and 
particularly that they are so important that the Lord came for each one of them, regardless of anyone else in the world. Um, that one individual is so important that the gift is for them as well. Um, so that's a lot of what I spend time on um, during Advent and, and Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, that's such a great reminder. And I think that that's something that we all need to remember. Um, you know, I think as we grow older, we're more, probably a little more aware and, and hopefully sensitive, you know, to um, reaching out and to making sure that um, our loved ones are okay. And I think sometimes we think, oh, um, oh, I haven't heard from her. I guess she must be fine or something. Um, but not hearing from somebody doesn't necessarily mean that, right? So. Um, Danielle. What do the holidays kind of look like in your big family? Um, I mean, it's usually, um, you know, a really beautiful time for all of us. There are a lot of us, but I can also appreciate like Alyssa sharing, like she feels like things are changing, kind of this weirdness of what that looks like. But for us, it was always, you know, spending a lot of time together, preparing up until the time of Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, you know, lots of food, lots of laughter, a lot of pe people, a lot of energy. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, for those reasons, you know, I look forward to it so much. It's always, it's always just been a, a heartwarming, special time, made me grateful for the gift of family. Um, and again, like now that you were kind of in, I think in my family in a space of transition, it's kind of like, okay, what does it look like now? Or um, especially like since some of the elders used to own play anything. So now it's, things are, are changing and kind of embracing that. Um, to like, I'll share later, like in the past, I mean, I never really connected with like uh, the infant Jesus part of Christmas, like that's what we're celebrating. But it wasn't until recently, like I had a really kind of profound experience. So now I'm like excited for entering in in a new way. Um, and I'll share more about that later. So I'm excited to hear more about that um, because you know, I've been able to get the advanced preview on that and hear, <laughs> hear a little bit more about what that entails. And I think it's been really moving for me. That's the beauty of like just being able to, I think, gather as women together and just be able to talk, you know, as um, women to share like this is what um, really kind of spoke to me or this is what's helping me right now in this season or um, things that they share. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that before. So that really has inspired me to now think um, I should, you know, focus a little bit more on that. So, um, so I think, you know, talking a little bit about that, let's, you know, address the part about, um, you know, what this year has been and what it's kind of entailed for us uh, with, with having this unprecedented, you know, virus and how it's, it's um, kind of changed the landscape of things, right? Normally this time of year, you, you wouldn't, um, you know, be considering what difficulties you would have about trying to gather, you know, like, should we invite them? Should we not invite them? Like, where do we go? What do we do? Um, so I'd love for us to talk a little bit about, you know, how we're kind of navigating um, through that. I, I'll kick it off and then I'll turn it over to you, Michelle. Um, you know, for us, being a family of two here, um, and I've talked to the girls about this before, but um, so I, both of my parents are deceased. And it was uh, most recently that my dad passed away um, last March. And so um, then, uh, in the summer of this year, my father-in-law passed away. So we've, you know, experienced a, a pretty tremendous amount of grief um, over the past few years. And that that kind of changes the holidays a little bit for us, right? Because um, holidays are really that time that you have those family memories and those family traditions. And so it really then brings you back to thinking about them and, and missing them and, and thinking about those uh, memories that you shared with them um, so they can be uh, a little melancholic, you know, at times. And I think that um, it's it, it's good to remember that maybe you're not personally grieving somebody right now, but maybe you know somebody because we've had so much loss this year um, that has lost somebody. Um, and it would be great to, I think, just kind of let them know that you're thinking of them. And that can be, you know, just any variety of ways, right? Because communication is so uh, simple these days. 
uh, for us to be able to send a text or a card or a message or post on their Facebook just to say, um, you know, thinking of you, um, it, it maybe uh, the holidays might be a little bit tough. So just want to let you know, I'm just, you know, remembering you and your family right now. Um, you know, for us, so I think some people like maybe set a place at the table and all of that kind of stuff. I've never really done that before. Um, but somebody had said something to me before that really struck me. And they were talking about how, um, you know, sometimes I think we think we're, we're celebrating without them, but they're actually so present to us, you know, within the body of Christ still. So we are still celebrating with them. And I think it's hard to think of that, you know, because we don't see them and we can't hug them and we can't give them the gift and we can't, you know, those kind of different things. I think it's it's a lot about um, letting your heart heal a little bit, going through the steps of grieving, and then trying to really focus on that gratitude and remembering um, the blessings that you had, remembering that they're still present in your life, and that um, you really still have a relationship with them. You know, you really still have an opportunity to celebrate with them, and thinking about the things that you still can do instead of focusing on, um, well, I'm not going to have any more holidays with them, and we're not going to do this, and we're not going to do that. Um, Because that, I think, really brings us um, into all the can'ts, into all the, you know, areas that can be really challenging. So um, that's just my kind of like kickoff there with grief and talking a little bit about COVID. Um, I'd love to hear what you ladies have to say as well. Uh, Thank you for unmuting me. I don't have to (laughs) like I think your screen's broken. I think your screen's broken. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's kind of coming in and out. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. We just reconfigured our internet. And uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I was just saying, I love hearing what you share about your family and what you've gone through. You've gone through an incredible amount of grief. Um, on our end of things, like we are in, yeah, I know this is a really hard year for a lot of people, and my heart feels that. Um, in many ways, this year started out that way for us. A lot of tears, a lot of heartache. Uh, But we're in a different place right now. God has incredibly blessed our family. He's shown us how he can do great things regardless of what the economy is like, regardless of what's happened. And so we're just sitting in a place of blessing and gratitude. And I'm constantly thanking God for the way he's blessed us for Thanksgiving. We have what is a 25 person cap limit here in Virginia. Okay. So we are following the rules. <laughs> We're gonna have 24 people at our house. <laughs> I've got a couple sisters coming in and a couple college kids who needed a place to go for Thanksgiving and they needed good food. Um, one of the things that we love to do is um, we love to host. And whether that's at Thanksgiving, whether that's coming into the holiday season, I know um, our family, if, you know, for, for com- well, coming into now Advent, now for Thanksgiving, we're hosting a, hosting a lot of people, but coming into Advent and Christmas, um, we focus on several things. First of all, we do a Jesse tree. So we do, um, we do actually, uh, have symbols that we painted almost all of them. We started them years ago and every year it's like we paint another one and we're like, Oh, we're going to finish them next year. And then we're going to make them for all of our kids. But we do the Jesse train. It's this is a really great example of um, for those of you who struggle with perfectionism, and then get mad when you fail. Uh, we fail all over the place. We always say we're gonna do the Jesse tree. We have the book. We read through it, and some days we do like five days at a time because we forgot. Um, but we, I know that God listen. I know He sees our hearts and our intention to do this stuff. It's so easy to get caught up when I see some of my friends who are amazing Catholics and they're like doing the most beautiful this and the most beautiful that for Advent. And I'm just like, oh, my biggest prayer though, um, coming into Advent and coming into Christmas. And this was just really, I've been on this reconversion path the past last couple of years has been um, asking Christ to be reborn in my heart. It reminds me of a song when I was four years old. My mom and I sang in front of a group, and she harmonized to me uh, singing the song called Come Lord Jesus. And it's just, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, 
come and be born in my heart. And even as an adult, I think about that and I have prayed like these, that God would just bring these miracles upon my life, upon my kid's life, upon your life. Uh, but one of the biggest paths to heaven is us understanding God's love for us. Like when you read about Padre Pio talking about the gar our guardian angels, their job, one of their biggest jobs is to help us understand what God's love is, how much he loves us. St. Catherine of Siena, God the Father says, you, you need to know how much I love you. And in uh, the di Diary of Faustina, same thing. And so um, one of my prayers, having been someone who has struggled with self-image much of my life and with just talking down to myself and not seeing my value and not seeing my worth, one of my biggest prayers is just um, come and be born in my heart. And, and that's our theme through Advent. And I really work with my kids and, on that and um, just bringing that theme so that Christmas Day when we go to Mass, like asking God, okay, perform this miracle. Perform this miracle. Give me an extra understanding of your love. I love that comment. I actually put that in our, uh, <laughs> in our Advent uh, planning there, which, you know, is just about... Um, you know, asking the Lord to be born into your heart, asking the Lord for those things. And I think that um, those are those little reminders that I kind of set each week, you know, that the ladies have shared um, with me to make me think, okay, like this is the task list that I have to do this week, right? And I also struggle with perfectionism. So I, I understand that part of just, you know, like, wanting the house to look a certain way and seeing all the pictures on Instagram and Pinterest and all the different things. And then realizing that um, last year, you know, after losing my dad and my father-in-law was ill um, and I was sick that, you know, my presents aren't wrapped, my cards aren't ready. My, um, <laughs> you know, I mean the, the list, like everything on my four week little planner list there, that was not <laughs> gonna happen, you know, like in that way. And, uh, you know, Tammy, I think you'll you'll be able to talk to this about this right, too, of how this is looking different for you guys this year with your moving. But um, Jesus is, is still coming. You know, Jesus is um, still wanting me to know that I, I came into the mess. I actually came into the greatest mess. I came in a manger in the most humble way um, into you know, he didn't have a home that he was born into. There wasn't a midwife there. You know, like there was not optimal circumstances is the, is the point. And if there's not optimal circumstances, um, he came. You know, so he's still coming. And if I don't have all the things the way that I would like them to be, um, he's still coming. And it's still going to be Christmas. And there's still joy to be had. And there's still celebration. And there's still beauty. So... Right, Tammy? Yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to speak to is, you know, um, a couple of years ago, I realized that what was happening in our home is we, we live in a culture that's, that's very much about um, everything being done quickly. You know, we don't really wait for anything. Everything is instantaneous. Your daughter needs a leotard. You can have it in two a days on Amazon. And I noticed in being a parent and trying to build virtue in my children, I noticed that they were having a really hard time with waiting for stuff. And so I started looking at, at Christmas and saying, how can I as a mom take back Advent? You know, how can I, how can I really encourage my kids that there's, there's joy in being patient? You know, there's joy that comes in waiting for stuff. And I wanted to share a resource with you. First, I wanted to say, you know, as a mom, you know, my children now are, my youngest is eight. So I have an eight-year-old or nine-year-old, an 11-year-old, a 13, a 14, and a 16. You know, it was entirely different about five years ago for my life, you know, and and eight years ago, entirely different. So I think one of the things that we have to look at is see where we are in our life. You know, are we at a place where we need to keep it simple? Because there's a way we can still bring Christ in our heart in a way that's very manageable for us as a mom of a nursing baby or a mom of toddlers. There's a way that we can keep our home just visibly to have Christ present in our home. Um, I was sharing this, I wanna share this resource 
It is a book. It's a three-dimensional book. You can buy it on Amazon. It's by Ann Voskamp. And it's called the, the Wonders of the Greatest Gift. And I'm going to show this to you as quick as I can. It is a three-dimensional Christmas tree. Now, all of these little, these are actually little, um, these are little things, that, little boxes that open up and they hold ornaments. And then the kids, you know, pick up the ornament and they put it on the tree. I mean, this is, I mean, how easy is that to store? It just goes with your regular bookshelf, you know, and the kids and I, we put it on a coffee table. You can have an apartment and still do this. You don't need a big space. There is a book that's included in here that has a meditation on it. As your kids get older, you can do the meditation and then put the ornament on. It's simple things like this that we do that can really make Christ present in our home. You know, our house, we don't really, we don't decorate our house. Um, we start off with an advent tree. So we just have these purple and gold beads. So we, we, we get our Christmas tree and we put white lights on it and these purple and gold beads, you know, these, we have um, bows and these ornaments, that's all there is. You know, we don't get anything out for Christmas yet. And it's not until the third week that we start taking out little things you know we get out some maybe a um a decoration maybe a rug maybe a throw and we're kind of preparing the kids you know it's okay for us to go in a store and see you know sometimes christmas stuff is already out you know in october but like i'm trying to teach my kids that we need to take back advent we need to wait for the lord we need to prepare our hearts there's so much that we have to do and then in our family we actually, on Christmas Eve, we get out our Christmas decorations, and each child puts one Christmas decoration on or two. When they were when they were little, we used to have them put one or two on, and they would wake up to the tree entirely done by my husband and I. But as they've gotten older, we as a family have just sat around with hot chocolate, and we completed the tree. And then we typically um, do an Advent Angel gift exchange Christmas Eve amongst just with our family. But the next day starts Christmas for us. And then then we then we go out and we um you know we play in the snow and we get out the Christmas books and all of our Christmas books come out and we celebrate Christmas and we talk about Christmas and you know um if I can give one piece of advice to anyone who's listening that is a mom of littles or is a mom with little kids. Um, I think the, the biggest piece of advice I can give is that our Christmas prep starts with ourselves as women and as moms. And when our kids see us opening up scripture and our kids see us preparing our own hearts for, for Christmas, it, that bleeds into the rest of our home. So we start first with ourselves and then we look for little ways that we can bring that into the rest of our family. I mean, I'm not saying. <laughs> I said, I mean, I'm not saying it, but I'm saying it. A little with great love. Exactly. Um, no, I, I think that part, and that's a great transition, you know, to to um, Bridget because she just wrote a post about um, the goodness and waiting, and I, yeah, I, I think that this. This is tough for us, especially, I mean, I'm impatient. I have a hard time. Guys, I'm listening to Christmas music. I'm doing it, okay? Like, I know some people are really strict about it, you know? But um, I'm there. So tell us a little bit. Help us to understand the goodness of the way, uh, Bridget. Help us. The goodness in waiting. You want me to explain yeah. that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting what, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. It's interesting what you were just saying, Tammy, about um, Christmas and or the preparation for Christmas, starting with yourselves as moms, because I have a distinct memory of my own mom and how stressful Christmas was for her and how we experienced her stress and made, it made Christmas less joyful for us because we could just feel the stress of, and as we were talking about before, you know, we feel this obligation to 
give the best, be the most generous. I mean, we would spend Christmas Eve as kids taking loaves of bread around to our neighbors that, you know, my mom was hand making in addition to planning Christmas dinner, et cetera, et cetera. And it just got so extreme. Um, I've kind of had a very uh, recoiled type of reaction um, in my adulthood to anything that causes extra exertion or extra stress to ourselves during the holidays. I mean, I know it's part of it is inevitable and this year is going to be a whole lot different for a whole lot of us, maybe all of us um, in one way, shape or form. Um, but in terms of the, the goodness in waiting, I'm also, I love giving. I absolutely love giving. I would rather give gifts than receive them. But my problem is, you know, I would buy a gift for a family member and I'm going to buy whatever November. Usually I'm a, week of Christmas kind of shopper. Like I get the best, I can always find something even on Christmas Eve, I have found the best gift, but I'm not recommending people follow my lead on that point. But when I buy something for someone, I want to give it to them right away. Like I don't want to wait for the season to be present. I don't want to wait for the day to come. I want to just give this to you. Um, but instead of doing that, I'm trying to remember to pray for the person until I can give them the gift. It's not easy for me because when I bought something for you, I'm excited about it. I want to give it to you right away. Um, I find myself kind of pushing through the year and wanting to get to November and December. Um, Thanksgiving and Christmas have been long been favorites of mine. And especially this year, it's like, are November and December ever gonna get here? Um, Cause it's like been 20 years since January. Um, but um, I, there's there's so much there's so much in the waiting that can be that can be good for us. I know that's the goodness in waiting. I'm really doing a great job describing it. But um <clears throat> the idea of there is something coming and it's not present yet. What can I do in the time before it arrives? Um we tend to want to jump, you know, let's jump ahead three weeks, let's jump ahead four months, let's be where that season or that day is right now, but we're not meant to be there yet. There's so much grace in each day leading up to that, to that day or it, up to that season um, that I, I just, I don't know. I found it. Um, I found it a, a challenge in a good way to try to be present in the day that's been given to us. So between now and Thanksgiving, there are seven days. There's a lot that we can do in those seven days. There's a lot that's present to us in those seven days. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we celebrate each day of Advent. There is a meaning and a point to each of those days in Advent, and there's a reason that the church um, uh, thought of this season the way that they did and, and um, manifested the season and, and focused on the different liturgical prayers and as, on the feast days, as you mentioned. Um, and we can just blow through all of those things and we can really miss what those moments might actually be really bringing to us um, before the arrival of Christmas day or even on the arrival of Christmas day. And then no, you don't take down your Christmas tree on the 25th and throw it out to the curb. And that was always one of my least favorite things was, you know, people would toss their tree out by the night of Christmas. And it's like, no, 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 it just started. It just started. Um, so, trying to remember the graces present in each day between now and the actual arrival of Christ. It's not just let's fast forward this next five weeks, although a lot of us want this year to be over, so I can understand that. But um, it really is, there's a point to what the church has designed for us. And there's a point to all of these days that can bring us um, moments of marvel and, and, um, reasons to focus outward and reasons to also focus inward. So. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, I, I love that part of, um, of the same way with gifts, you know, it's like, as soon as I get it, I'm like, Oh, I'm so excited. I don't want to give it to you. You know? <laughs> and, um, there, there's something about waiting in that, right. You know, of, of just, um, that patience, that um, unfolding with the Lord. And I think, um, you know, we've talked about this on the blog is that I also struggle with anxiety. And so waiting for people that have anxiety is difficult, right? <laughs> because our anxiety wants us to 
just get things done. I want to cross that thing off my list. I want to get through that thing so that um, that anxiety is like relieved from me and then I can just, you know, get on to, to the next thing. Um, and that's kind of the the antithesis of what God's asking for. You know, I, I'm not asking you to rush on to the next thing, you know, and stuff I'm giving you um, today. And this is what we're able to accomplish. And I've talked about this, you know, Tammy, because her husband, you know, can, can, I think him and I are, are similar in this way where, you know, like we're, we're, we're the planners. So we're thinking, you know, and stuff we're, we're at, you know, lunch and we're talking about what we're doing for dinner. You know, we're at, at this thing and we're talking about what are we going to do over here? Um, so, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to this of like, we don't, it's hard to like be in the moment. It's hard, hard to be present, especially in our culture. Um, that is always so quick and always so fast. And like you're saying, that Amazon kind of mentality of, oh, crap, I need this for tomorrow. I know I can get it. Um, so when we're kind of programmed like that to, to just say, wait, you know, this next, you know, right after Thanksgiving, I know you're thinking about, oh, we got Black Friday and then we got Cyber Monday, whatever. But really, we got <laughs> the first Sunday of Advent there. And um, I think it sneaks up on a lot of us and we're like, crap, what am I going to do? Then we're just spending the first whole week of Advent just trying to figure it out and go you know, through it. So that was a big push for us to do this before Thanksgiving, you know, um, to be able to say, OK, wait, yeah, we're talking about next week, maybe what we're doing. But we're really also looking right beyond the corner, you know, to Advent and um, and to be ready so that we're not just um, like it just not just dumped upon us. Um, but then how, how do we make ourselves more present in the moment? Um, Danielle, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you're going to be living Advent, you know, trying to do that this year. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm tempted by all those things as well. I mean, the Christmas carols, the, I mean, the feel good. I mean, who doesn't want to like sit next to a lit tree with hot cocoa on the couch or the blanket? I mean, who doesn't want that, right? It's like so natural. Um, so, I mean, I, I try to, um, I don't like do it Black Friday. I'll try to like delay bringing the stuff out for as long as I can. Um, it does sadden me to walk into a store in October and see ornaments out. Like that makes me sad, you know, um, because of how special a time it is. And, um, but I think like in the past, I never really connected with, the um, like this the celebration of Christmas as much until last year I went on a silent retreat where I did the like the silent the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius and I just had this like really profound experience that made me look at the birth of Jesus in a totally different way so I was um, kind of starting out the onset of it and this priest was trying to prepare me to kind of get into a vulnerable place with Jesus and. What he told me to do is um, to spend some time meditating on the gospel narrative of the infant of the infancy narrative in Luke, um, just kind of like rereading it, sitting with it, praying through it. And he said, after I had done that, after I had kind of like seasoned my heart and spirit with those words, to take a pillow and like embrace the pillow in my arms and imagine that the baby Jesus was being gifted to me as my savior, as like mine. And I was like, okay, like I'll go do that. Um, and then he told me a story, which like now I'll share what happened with you when I did that. But he told me a story right after that. He said he was a president of a Catholic university at one time. And in his like development office, he had all these women working together. And if you've ever worked with women in office, sometimes you might know it can get kind of catty sometimes. Um, so after a period of time, these women start to bicker and have problems and dissension among them to the point where there was like exclusion, like people weren't talking to each other. They were cold. So it was like that for a while. And he didn't intervene or do anything until one day, one of the women's I think great daughter or granddaughter was brought a baby was brought into the office. So one of the women brought the baby in to share with like her coworkers and these women who were not talking to each other, like all congregated around the baby and they started like, Oh, you know, like the baby was so cute. And 
it, the, the priest said like, it was amazing. Like it was like the baby had transformed the room um, just by being this like vulnerable infant. Um, and he's like, he, he said, you know, like the power of that vulnerability in that child is so significant. So when I went back to my room and I like meditated on the gospel and then I did that like pillow exercise, like I entered in, I prayed and I started bawling. Um, I started bawling. It was like this beautiful, um, this beautiful activity of like becoming vulnerable in the child Jesus in your arms. Like he, he was totally vulnerable with you, which made you like, it made me have the freedom to be totally vulnerable with him. I just cried with like this pillow, Jesus in my arms. Um, and I was like, I just wrote a blog about this and just like praying about the preparation of Advent. Um, and um, just like how Jesus wants our hearts. Like this is what we're all talking about, right? He loves us and he wants this, like this heart, this space. And we have to kind of make the space for him. We have to kind of like enter in and like, you've got the gifts under the tree and the lights and the, like that, all that's great. But like, you, like we can't really like receive it and like have those moments and like receive what should be the birth of our savior who came just for us if we don't kind of push it aside. Um, so this is, um, yeah, my second Christmas after that experience. And I, it, it just feels different. It's like, finally I get it. Like, it's not just a cute baby in the manger. It's, it's this like profound child who makes me safe and who like wants more of my heart. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> Preach it. So I'm, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like a baby in this like part of my like Christmas conversion. Cause it's never been like this for me. It's like, okay. Like I'm learning, like, this is what Christmas is. It's like, this is what it means to have a relationship with the child Jesus. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Oh my goodness. Right. Thank you for sharing that. It, that blog is going to be coming on um, next week. Okay. Yeah, the warrior baby at Christmas. <laughs> warrior baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so you guys will have to check that out next week. Um, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's something that I, I started to reflect on after Danielle shared that with me. And um, I think it's really moving when you enter into that, uh, you know, just thinking beyond um, – you know, this, this, you know, oh, this little nativity or like this, you know, representation of Jesus when we see and then making that personal connection, you know, and stuff for it. Like, I don't know. I think that's something I love to do. Talk about, you know, when I went praying is just kind of spend some time and um, picture, you know, myself uh, maybe leaning against Jesus's chest or, you know, leaning against his heart or something where you kind of like enter in uh, with him. So, Maybe we could talk a little bit about um, what are you guys going to be doing uh, for Advent? Do you have some ideas already of um, things that you want to do? Michelle? We have like, ah, mute. I had not go that far. Um, yeah, so real quick, real quick, a couple things. One thing I wanted to say real quick is that um, something that you said, Danielle, just reminded me that I, on some of my blogs, you've seen me talk about the Adoration Chapel in Poland. Um, if you haven't seen it, go on to YouTube, look up Adoration Poland, and be blown away by this beautiful monstrance, which is Our Lady, and the center of, of her heart is the Eucharist. But something that really struck me, and I know it's going to be new for me this Christmas season, I'm definitely taking in, is a real connection with Our Lady um, when, we, when I received the Eucharist, because I... Um, Recently, I was receiving the Eucharist. I was like, "Oh my, oh my goodness! I'm, I'm Mary, and Christ is in me." Like, not the sense of I'm Mary, but in the sense of we have, like, we have an opportunity to enter into this beautiful unity with Our Lady, and holding Christ inside of us, and having a mother who's had held six children inside of me. Like, I just know that um, when that crossed my mind, I knelt down at at communion with Christ inside of me. I, I imagined myself like Our Lady holding the Eucharist in, in her pregnancy. 
you know, and even in that, the adoration chapel, but that that's, you know, what a beautiful gift that this Advent season, um, when we receive the Eucharist at Mass, we can enter into that wow. We are like, we are likened unto Mary for just even a short while carrying Christ within us. It just blows me away blows me away and almost brings me to tears. But um, that being said, back to Advent. Okay. So uh, we actually celebrate very similar to Tammy. Um, we put lights on our Christmas tree. We get it right after Thanksgiving, put lights on our Christmas tree, but we put our Jesse tree ornaments on there um, for the ornaments. And then on Christmas Eve, we have a whole tradition where we go to the nursing home and we sing carols. So all of us, like I play guitar, Joseph plays guitar, the kids all harmonize and we sing everything from the good old Christian, the favorites to I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus to just, just fun stuff. And then after that, we go directly to mass. After mass, we come home and we then get the hot chocolate and we decorate the tree. After the tree's decorated, Kids get to open their new Christmas pajamas and their Advent angels. Only we just call them Secret Santa, but Advent angels is probably the better word for it. Tammy, I love that. Um, but we do that, and then the kids go to go to bed in anticipation of the next day. But for Advent, we um, Trent made us a beautiful Advent wreath out of little logs, and he drilled holes for the candles. And he, I mean, he just made it so nice. We had an Advent wreath that kept falling apart year after year. And then he did this, and it's never going to fall apart. I mean, I hope it doesn't set something on fire because it's putting candle in wood, but <laughs> it's really beautiful. Our goal is every year, and again, to do the Jesse tree every night for night prayers. Um, I love, uh, we have this old, it's a little purple book, but it walks through every symbol, and it walks through the scriptures, and it has questions to ask the kids, and we just love that. Uh, walking through the genealogy of Christ and and taking that that walk and then we um we I think that's pretty much I know we do the good deeds tree but I'm not sure if that was uh, sometimes we do it for Advent sometimes we do it for um for Easter but it's uh putting a tree where every time the kids do a good deed like you make like a little a little symbol and put a little string through it. So then you decorate the tree with all the good deeds as a gift to give to Christ, um, which is great. I think in, if it's Advent, it's more like Christmas ornaments, but if it's Easter, it's more flowers. But um, that's kind of what we do. Uh, and I think as our kids get older, just trying to find new ways to draw them in, because now we have older teenagers and it's different than the little stories when they were littler. Um, so trying to find new ways to bring Christ alive in our family. Now, I will say that my sister, um, and this is kind of back to like traditions in Advent, my sister's Ukrainian Catholic, and their Advent is a lot like Lent. Like they fast, they do, and I'm there's a part of me that loves that. <laughs> you want a second Lent? We should want a second Lent. Really, we should. However, that being said, um, it has made me think about maybe wanting to incorporate on my own a little more sacrifice to Christmas. And, and my kids, right now, our struggle is, and, and maybe you can relate with this, is I have older kids now who are they're wanting to do more before Christmas actually hits. And so we're having to have these conversations and it's hard because you want, I like, you know, is it, which one of you was saying, if you like snuggling up next to the fire and you like being able to have that. Um, but there's also the fact that Christ is not yet born. So we're, we're kind of in these conversations right now. So I don't know what this year will bring. It's just a new, new conversations for us, but um, I'm really excited to see though, what Christmas Day will bring, because I feel like the more that we ask Christ to be born in our heart, the more that we invite him in, the more miracles that he performs on his birthday. So very, very excited about that. I love that idea. <laughs> him uh, inviting him to do those miracles, inviting him to do the work and then see what he does. Um, you know, it just makes me think a lot when you talk about like, these opportunities that you have with your children. I know, Tammy, you, you see this really as this 
time to do kind of like virtue training with the kids. What are some of the things that that you do during this Advent season to work on that with with your children? Well, it's so funny because I'm over here like doodling things I'm going to talk about as you're talking, and I'm like, ways to teach a love of giving. But, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I think anytime we have holidays or we have something that's happening liturgically, it, it offers us the ability to kind of come in there with virtue in a real solid way. Um, one of the things I would say, which I think is is really a gift in the church, is we have so many saints that have feast days in the church through Advent. Um, I know the kids and I like to do the legend of the poinsettia. And so that typically tends to be where we go and we get poinsettias and we put them on our mantle and we go through that Tommy DePaula book. Um, we talk about Our Lady of Guadalupe, you know, and we celebrate like her feast day. Um, saint Cecilia, you know, she um, is the patron saint of, um, of music, but she also is the patron saint for, um, uh, for the eyes for like light. That's what it is for light. And so typically on her feast day, that's when we get in the car, we go and we grab hot chocolate and we go look at Christmas lights. And that's our way of honoring this saint, you know, whose, whose feast day was about lights. So we're trying to incorporate, you know, we're trying to incorporate the saints and um, different traditions and I think as you go through, you know, Juan Diego, we talk a lot about like holy boldness and obedience with Juan Diego, you know, and his willingness to kind of, you know, gather these roses and kind of bring them to the bishop and, you know, kind of say this, you know, this church is supposed to be built. This lady came to me and said, this is what's supposed to happen. So I think if you look through, if you look through the calendar, there's so many things that are set in there already that can, you know, kind of assist you. Um, in celebrating Advent. I will tell you a really neat story um, that happened with my children. I told you I live outside of Philadelphia and this in, in Philly, they have um, Charles Dickens. There's a big Charles Dickens um, that is actually set into the walls of Macy's. And so they open up this area at Christmas time Oh, sorry. Um, it's built into the walls. And we, we took the kids down and we saw this big, you know, light show. And then we went through Charles Dickens. And the highlight, because we're really big, we love to eat. So we went to this place called Maggiano's. And it's just really awesome Italian food. And they give you like such huge portions. And the kids and I and my husband, we were talking about how awesome our lunch was going to be the next day. We all had leftovers. And as God does in my life and with my kids, as we're walking with these bags of leftovers, the bottom of the bag splits open right in front of a homeless man. And I like looked at my kids and my kids looked at me and I said, these leftovers are not ours. And they, they knew. You know, so we, we stopped and we asked the gentleman if he wanted it. And he said, no, he had already eaten dinner. You know, he didn't need anything. But we prayed. We said a little quick prayer. And we asked the Lord to help us find somebody before we got onto our train. We took a train into the city. And right at the door of the train station was about four homeless people within the door that were trying to stay warm. And it was a real gift to pass my leftovers to my kids and to allow them to kind of give them, you know, to these homeless people. And I remember getting on the train, my youngest kind of looked at me and she said, mom, is it bad if tomorrow I think about those leftovers? Because I really wanted my lasagna. And I looked at her, I said, no, it's not bad, but maybe that's a way that God can remind you to pray for that guy that ate them. You know, you can pray for the man that had your lasagna because I'm sure he's praying and thanking you for giving the lasagna over. So I think there's there's things that we can we can try to teach our kids to want to give. We can we can have we can try to show our kids that it's not always about them receiving. 
but it's about them thinking outside. You know, our church sponsors, I think we had something like 4,000 gifts last year that the church organized giving away. It has become my family's absolute favorite tradition. Um, we get dressed in Christmas pajamas and we take a bunch of gifts to the church that our family ourself purchases. But then we sort them into all these different bags for different families. And I remembered when my daughter, what they do is they put each gift on an Advent angel. It's an actual construction paper angel and it's attached to the wall at the back of the church. So you walk in and it just looks like a construction paper village, you know, blew up. And my kids always try to find an angel of the same age that they are. And I'll never forget when my second oldest looked at me and goes, man, this seven-year-old wants underwear? And she couldn't fathom like why she couldn't buy the seven-year-old a Barbie. And I looked at her and I said, sweetheart, that seven-year-old wants underwear because she doesn't have any. And then we had to have this whole discussion about needs versus wants. You know, and I looked at her and I said, sweetheart, you have all your needs met so you can want a Barbie. But like, if your feet are cold, you're going to want sneakers. You know, if you don't have underwear, you're going to want underwear. So I think it was a big revelation to my kids that, man, if somebody my age is writing down that they want a sweatshirt, it's because they're cold. You know, it's because they don't have one. And I think just in general, that mindset makes your kids, I just started noticing over the years that my kids' Christmas lists got shorter and shorter. And they got smaller and smaller. Because I think what they started to realize is we really don't need anything. You know, these are just a couple of things that we want. And I think if anything, that's what I want my kids to take away as they're adults. What I want them to take away is that in our home, we try to foster thinking of other people. We tried to foster that this is the mentality that Christ would have. And that's what him being born in our heart looks like. And that's how it changes us. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I love that when we were growing up, it's like, if you got clothes, you were like, you know, like, <laughs> okay, great. Well, what's, what's next here, you know, and stuff like that. But um, both my parents, you know, grew up in poverty um, in the Detroit area back in Michigan we're from. And, um, and so actually there was 10 kids in my dad's family and um, they had, um, I think it was the Goodfellows or something that would bring gifts to them because their family, you know, couldn't afford it. Um, my grandfather was laid off um, a lot of the year. And so um, just those stories, you know, and stuff of, um, my dad having like two pairs of pants, you know, and stuff that he would wear and getting teased by the kids and different things like that. And you're realizing, okay, I'm like throwing this off to the side, but like, I do have, you know, this, everything that I could need. And then I'm able to, um, you know, ask for these special toys and gifts and things like that. Um, so I, I think it's a really important lesson, not just for kids. I know uh, Bridget, you've, um, you know, from your experience of working um, in medical missions and then working, um, you know, and, and living in Haiti and things like that. I mean, maybe you could speak to us a little bit about, about need and how you kind of work with that during the Advent season. Yeah, it was, it was, as Tammy was talking and particularly with your story about, um, you know, walking through the streets and, someone what what blew me away was that the gentleman said that he had already eaten and he wanted to be sure that those went to somebody else that is one of the biggest lessons that i've learned through working in the developing world and being in the developing world at different periods of time um for i lived in haiti for a couple of years uh, as a volunteer nurse and i also have worked in um, nicaragua and in mexico um, and Christmas for the folks in these countries has nothing to do with material gifts, nothing at all. Um, it's about being together. It's about treasuring the time that they have together. It's about celebrating the feast. It's about rejoicing and, um, the birth of Jesus, um, it has absolutely nothing to do with what are you going to give me? What's the latest, greatest toy that I'm going to get from you? Um, so it, 
it was, what was it, in Haiti, they spend Christmas Eve and Christmas Day just like any other day. Like they go to church and they have a service and then they are together and that's it. Um, in Nicaragua, it's the same thing. These folks that experience material poverty are so spiritually rich. <laughs> um, and after being in the developing world for a number of years and working there over and over and over and over again, they had nothing to distract them from, meaning like no toys, no games, no, um, no latest, greatest, no car, no, uh, you know, um, airline ticket to fly this way or that way. Um, it was all about welcoming other people into their homes, sharing what they had with others. I mean, we would give a woman in Haiti a bag of rice. She would come and she would ask for a bag of rice. She would take that bag of rice home and she would split it with her neighbor. You know, whereas we're like, wait, 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 I want a four slice of pumpkin pie. Like, you know, this is the only time I'm going to be able to get it. So I want to eat all of it for myself. The whole idea of selfishness and of everything for me is not completely lost on them because, you know, everyone wants to be able to live and survive. But it's all about how can I share this with other people? How can I bring joy to other people? Um, when I lived at the home in Haiti and um, the kids would celebrate Christmas on Epiphany. Um, so Three Kings Day, when, when the wise men arrived and presented their gifts to the Christ child, that's when the children um, in all of this organization actually received their gifts. So Christmas Eve, Christmas Day were spent just quietly eating, being together. Um, and then the Feast of Epiphany is when they would receive um, their presents. And these presents, as you were saying, um, Tammy, were not super gimmicky toys. They were not, you know, the new Barbie. They were not the latest whatever NFL branded football that so-and-so signed or whatever it was. It was underwear. It was a new pair of shoes. You got a pair of shoes in the winter and you got a pair of shoes in the summer. So these are your new shoes for the next six months. Um, it was, you know, perhaps a new shirt and a pair of pants. And these kids went ecstatic over something new to wear. Um, and the difference between their outlook and the joy that they would have and the fact that they would kick around a seven up bottle and play soccer with it for days on end and just have a blast just continuously just humbled me and humbled me over and over and over again. Um, just about why is it so important that I must have said material item where these children and these adults that I'm serving and learning from are bringing and showing me so much about what actual joy is and about true rejoicing um, in the fact that their savior came for them and they are going to treasure the day and celebrate the feast um, without concern about what's being brought for them or what's being shared with them or what next latest greatest thing they're going to be able to receive. I, I think we can all take away something from that, right? You know, of just that simplicity, of that joy, of um, that childlikeness. Um, I mean, I think that that's what it, it, it calls us back to, right? You know, um, so Danielle, like, what what are the holidays gonna? Oh, Tammy, did you have? Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing. You know, um, I remember. One of the greatest Christmas presents my oldest ever received. And I remember my mom saying, I bought your daughter this Christmas present. And um, I'm not sure how she's going to take it, but I don't want to tell you what it is. And I said, okay, my daughter at the time was probably around seven. And my, my mother handed her this card and she opened it up and she burst into tears. And she went over and she kind of jumped on my mom and I'm like, for the first time, I had no idea what it was. Well, it was the same year that we had like the tsunami that came and destroyed, um, you know, so much. Um, I think it was of Haiti, right? I think it's that, was it Haiti that it was the tsunami was in? 
I don't yeah, know. She was watching something. Southeast uh, Asia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In Japan in 2011. Was it around that year? Yeah. Asia? Yeah. That's when it was. Mm -hmm. And oh, she okay. was so upset about it. And my mom had remembered it. So for Christmas, my mom had bought a goat in her name to be given to a family. And the letter proceeded to say that the goat, they would use the milk from the goat to, um, to sell. And then they would also have this, you know, this goat um, as a pet. And my daughter, it just meant the world to her. And I remember crying as well when I found out what it was, because that was the kind of gift I didn't think of, but I didn't realize what an impact it made on her. You know, that somehow she was at, you know, at seven, she's blessing somebody over there, you know, with this present. So I think there's things like that, that we can think of within our own homes where we can encourage kids and say, you know, this is what I bought you is I bought you the ability to bless somebody else, you know? And there are, sorry, I'm just going to interject. There are a lot of organizations that are very well established in other countries um, or based stateside that do things like that. Um, and if any of you people watching or listening need recommendations, um, I have a long list of organizations that I have researched and I know do really good work and, what you donate goes directly to the folks that need it. Um, it is a massive way to bless people. And even to, as you said, Tammy, like your mom gave your daughter the gift of blessing somebody else. Um, there was one year that I did that. There was a particular organization that I felt um, was working with the refugees over in Syria. And I told my family, instead of giving you gifts, you are, you're going to get a donation in your name to this organization because these, you know, these folks don't even know if they're going to survive for the next 15 minutes, let alone, you know, sit under a Christmas tree and by the fire, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if folks are motivated to do something like that, um, there are a, a very large number of organizations that are very, very solid. And I'd be glad to give my recommendation. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. Um, I, I think that that really kind of calls us into, you know, the meaning of this, of, of Advent. You know, it's easy for us to talk about, like, the, the decorations and how we're going to do things. And, you know, for me, that a big way that I enter in is that I, um, I do baking, and that really kind of connects me with my mom because she was such a great baker. So there's, like, all the cookies, you know, and stuff that we have to have. So I'll be sharing a few of my um, my recipes on the blog, um, some of my must-haves that will be coming up, um, but also cards. We have, um, you know, that was a tradition growing up. My family sent Christmas cards and stuff, and um, so I started watercoloring and painting them. Those are on the blog. You guys can go over to um, littlewithgreatlove.com slash shop, and I've put some of the watercolors there. And, um, you know, I always – even though I make the cards and stuff like that, filling them out is another thing. And it's always been like a struggle for me because it feels like doing my wedding invitations all over again, you know, it's like the list, I got to have a letter, the whole thing and all that kind of stuff. But um, I remember the, the last Christmas that we spent with my dad, um, you know, he was very, very sick. He had, you know, um, kidney issues, heart issues, wound issues. Um, he had to have, um, yeah, I mean, he was just very, very ill. And so we we're in and out of rehabs and hospitals and all those kind of things. And um, it was really, it was very fragile. And he had had pneumonia and had to have his toe amputated. And um, so that was in December. And he still bought my cards. <laughs> and he had his list. I remember he called his sister um, to get the addresses. And it took them probably an hour and a half over the phone, painstakingly trying to get these addresses, you know, and stuff like that. He had to write them down. He had to have his list. He had to have his cards. And we sat down that last year. I'm doing, trying to get my cards out. My dad's just trying to, you know, get, he was wanting to do his. And now we're well into January, you know, and stuff. And um, he was really, it was really special. Like he would always write 
um, was really good at like writing something very personal in each part. He really took his time with it, you know, and stuff. And here I am just like trying to shove it, you know, like get the thing in there, let's go, stamp it, you know, and stuff. And um, I knew it was going to be his last. <laughs> and so he, you know, he's trying to write things out. And I'm like, Dad, it's okay. You know, it's okay if you just, if you just, uh, you know, just, just sign it, you know. So he really kind of called me on, you know, to that, to realize that those are special things, you know, things that we try to brush through and just think, I got to get this done, guys. You know, kids, get in the car. We got to get there. All of the cards have to get out. Come on, let's get to the post office. You know, those are special things. People, um, I mean, if you can't send cards this year, it's okay, you know, but um, if you can, you know, and they don't get there right on the 25th, that's okay because we celebrate, you know, Christmas for much longer than that. You know, those are special things, those special greetings that people will hold on to and that mean a lot to them. And, and that's something that he showed me for that. So just wanted to share that. Didn't think I was going to cry, but. <laughs> but anyways, um, Danielle, I just wanted to give you a little chance to share about your advent. And then I think from there we could, um, you know, get into any questions that you guys have and, and, and wrap up as well. Um, that reminds me, and, and I do have um, just one tradition I did want to share. Um, so my grandfather, my grandfather was like a father to me, um, and I was really close to him. And he passed in 2017. So the Christmas, like the holidays without him have been difficult. Um, but we just have a really cool tradition that evolved. So one year, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago, my mom decided she was going to buy a life-size nativity scene from Hobby Lobby. Um, and she did it, you know, it was, um, it was on sale, just like elaborate thing. And it's beautiful. So that, in that year, I think my mom was living with my grandparents. She, she still does. Um, and so that's where it was going to be at my grandma's, my grandparents' uh, house, even though she, you know, she bought it as a gift for me. So that year we placed all the statues on the lawn and it was beautiful. We, I don't remember exactly what it looked like. We put lights out. Um, and then my grandfather said next year. I'm going to build a manger for that. And he did. So next year he would, you know, he was like, he worked with his hands a lot. So he got some lumber and just put together this humble little house. Um, and you know, that year we put it out in the grass and we put like Mary Joseph and the, um, empty crib. And we did do this on black Friday. Everybody went out there except for Jesus. So I'm guilty. Uh, Cause I partook in these activities. Um, so Joseph, Mary, and the crib went into the manger and outside was like a shepherd and the kings and our, um, yeah, the three kings, right? And some animals. Um, and then my grandpa said next year, like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it more elaborate. And he did. And then we just kept adding on. We had like trees outside. Um, it was funny. One year I went and got some hay from the feed store down the street. And so I had like a cow sitting on top of like these bales of hay. And I remember my grandparents were so mad after because like seeds had fallen into their grass and it like ruined their grass for an entire year. And then my grandfather said, next year I'm gonna put wheels on that manger. And the next year he did, he like screwed in wheels. So we started like wheeling it out of the garage every year. Um, but what was really beautiful is, I mean, obviously those memories, like I treasure those. Um, but my grandparents' house, they live like really inner city. It's gated, you know, it's a nice family oriented neighborhood, but with like, you know, questionable characters walking down the street sometimes too. Um, and we, as part of like the whole scene, I had these stones that were speakers and I put the stones out in front. So it looked like it was part of the scene and we had a stereo on the porch and we started playing Gregorian chant. So it was like, became like the most beautiful scene. You know, you have this little manger with statues and lights and just, it was like idyllic. And these people, like random strangers, strangers would be walking by, pausing at the gate, like taking it in. Um, cars would slow down. One year, like um, it was a church down the street. Like people, we did a, they did a posada. So they stopped at the house and prayed. And it, it always reminded us how like, 
the human heart is starving for Christ, no matter like who you are. Um, we just like that awe, like waiting to be like waiting to encounter Jesus somewhere, you know? So the way it's still there, they still do it every year. Um, my grandpa's not around, but it's, it's a great memory and I'm really grateful for that. So. I love that. I, I love like, you know, setting up that encounter for somebody, you know, like that, that is like one of those selfless gifts I think that we could do um, for, you know, how, well, why do we go to the trouble to do these things? You know, why do we put those things out? Why do we put these things up? What are they, what meaning do they have? And I think that those are the things that kind of draw us back to, you know, what's important. And like you said, you know, like, how those cards remind me of my dad, you know, that nativity reminds you of your grandpa. And that's something that you guys, whenever you set it up, you know, it's kind of, I'm sure you're thinking of him, you're remembering him and you're, he's still, you know, um, drawing people into the beauty of Christmas through that because he was such a huge part of that. And he always had this sign that he wanted out and it would say, Jesus is the reason for the season. He, he wanted to make sure that was that was out there so people knew what Christmas was about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so I don't know if we have any questions out there. Um, I think we could probably um, take any Q&A at this point. I know that um, Denise listed there that um, Vermilion Women's Center is also doing a I Give Catholic fundraiser, and there's a link for that. Um, so that's under the ask a question. There's a link to um, a million women's center. So there's two ways to give um, either under ask a question or under the donate there. Um, so hopefully you guys will get some of those resources. Um, and if we don't have any Q and a um, from anybody, we can kind of just give any closing thoughts that we have. Um, and then, you know, people can pick up their downloads and we can, um, you know, kind of enter into it next, next week you know so let me see if i can get michelle back up here Hold on. Okay, so. Hi. <laughs> okay. um, yeah thank you for sharing that denise that's awesome that link um and thank you for joining us you know tonight um Thank you for being with us. So um, any closing thoughts here, ladies? Anything left to share that we kind of like didn't cover so far? You know, like just one of the things that came to my mind and my heart is, is it's so easy um, for those of us who are type A perfectionists to get caught up in, oh my gosh, they do this and they do this and this, this, this you know, um, and one of the things that I know our family is working on, something I've really been focusing on this year is just being present. You know, and it's something that uh, Bridget has said is, you know, really trying to focus on being present within the week, within the day. And it brought me back to reading, I was reading St. Faustina's diary. And at one point she said, I live every day for the next hour. And I think that as we enter into Advent and we just ask God, you know, Lord, what is it that you're calling me to and my family to? Um, and even if it's focusing on those little things, like I love, I wrote down ideas from uh, Tammy and Bridget, Danielle and, and Lisa. I, I have my notebook here that are ideas because we're seeking as well. Always finding ways to, to invite Christ more in a deeper and more meaningful way into our heart. But that's like the biggest thing I would just say is, we can get caught up in perfectionism and having to do it the perfect way. And I'm not a good enough Catholic because I don't do this. I didn't know about St. Cecilia Light Day. I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> but just to, to think maybe even if it's one different thing this year, one different thing, and then just constantly ask the Lord to, um, to be born in your heart in a new way this Christmas season, this Advent season, because that's what it's all about. It's about his, his birth and his, and for those of us who are, are Catholics and we are able to receive the Eucharist, like, wow, when we take that and we connect it and we unite our Advent um, with Christ and with this coming in a new way, um, it's pretty exciting every, every Sunday or however often we get to church, we actually get to experience that. So, um, but yeah, just 
let go of the expectations and just lean into the coming of Christ and say, Lord, what is it? What is the one thing that you want me to focus on this, this Advent? So that, that's what I, that's what I have for you. <laughs> I think it's perfect. And as a fellow recovering perfectionist, amen. Uh, Tammy, <laughs> what you got for us, sister? Mine was going to be very similar. Um, my thing was going to be, you know, to really think about that one thing that stresses you out every year and really, you know, try to take, take it captive and ask the Lord, are you asking me to give this up? You know, are you asking me to unburden myself and, and kind of clear your crush in my heart from whatever it is that's burdening me? And I think we have to be willing to, you know, to really, really kind of enter into the holiday and say, what have other people told me is needed for me to celebrate this holiday? And what can I, as a person who has the full ability to change my traditions, you know, change the way my, the, the way my family's going, change what we've done in the past, like what is the Lord asking me to do? that I have never done before that I can do differently. And um, I've said it before, but you know, for us moving into a new house, we, we really love all our traditions. So this is a huge sacrifice for our family to not pull anything out, to not pull any bins out. And so in this way, I'm asking the Lord, what is, what's different for this year for us? You know, what are you asking? You're kind of stripping us of everything. So what are you trying to make sure we can do and that we should do or what our focus should be? Yeah, I think that that nails it right there because I, I think, you know, we can get comfortable about the way that we do. You know, we always do this. We always do that. You know, how can we not do that? But um, that's this year, right? I mean, we always get together, we, but we can't. We always do that. You know, we we've had to learn to adjust and adapt, and we've had to work with uh, new normal. We've heard that so many times. I think a lot of us you know, have that COVID fatigue about it, you know, and stuff. So, um, so if you've changed things, then what does it look like now, and how can I be present and entering? I think that's a huge, a huge thing. And I think also the other thing with that. Um, and then I'll jump off. <laughs> the other thing that I was going to say with that is, you know, do I have expectations of other people? That's not fair. You know, am I, am I assuming like where is so-and-so's Christmas card, you know, or mm -hmm. is so-and-so going to buy me a gift this year? Or, you know, um, they didn't really say anything about us, about us giving gifts this year. Like, you know, like kind of peel back and say, you know, if the Lord's working in my heart, other people might be having the same thing go on with them. And maybe this isn't this, this hasn't been a year of financial blessing for me. And it hasn't been a year for somebody that for somebody else who is struggling. And I have to be able to kind of sit back and say, everyone has the ability to come to that Christmas crash, you know, this year, however they get there. You know, and I don't, I can't put expectations on people, you know, why aren't they visiting me? Why aren't they having dinner with me? Not just, but because of COVID, but because of, you know, financial issues, because of, like you said, Lisa, the loss of someone in their family, people who are grieving, people who are suffering. There's so many reasons why people are approaching the crush. Some are approaching the crush in like a full on dragging their bodies to, you know, to Bethlehem. <laughs> Some of us are running. We've been there for weeks going like, okay, baby Jesus, let's get, let's get out. Let's get this moving on. And some of us can barely get there. So I think we have to really um, lean in, you know, to loving everybody. So I'm going to jump off. All right. Perfect. Thank you, sister. Um, yeah. Bridget, I'd love to hear kind of your parting thoughts uh, for, for us. Um, it's been a mantra of mine for a while, and I think particularly this year, I remember sending you a particular meme a few weeks ago, um, and then I ended up posting it on my own Instagram, and I wanted, like, painted in huge letters on my bathroom mirror, um, and I know, you know, repeated and repeated and repeated, it's an extraordinary year, it's a very different year, um, 
I like how Tammy says, don't expect you from other people. <laughs> um, and I've been trying to remember that as well. But for me, and I would hope for everyone this year, the overriding theme would be to be gentle with ourselves. Um, if you decide to go in a different direction this year and you're not 100% successful or it just seems like it's not going to work out for you due to whatever it is, don't just give up the ghost and say, forget it, this is a horrible idea. Or don't beat yourself up if you don't get the 15 loaves of bread baked for all of your neighbors this year. Or if you can't afford to go buy the flour to make the bread. Like this year is a very different year. Um, you know, we've heard 2020 and every kind of possible bad meme about it. And we've also heard some people say, well, 2020, like this is a year to really kind of look at ourselves <laughs> um, and ask for a more perfect vision of maybe where we are and where we would like to go and where life might be leading us or where the Lord might be directing us. Um, so for me this year, I'm going to do the same. Um, you know, I am single. I don't have too many attachments. I have a job, which I'm grateful for, but it doesn't mean that this year hasn't affected me the way that it has everybody else. So um, lean into God's gentleness, God's mercy, um, sit with him, sit with yourself, and just above all, be gentle with yourself and with others, but particularly with yourself. Like if this is the year to focus on yourself and learning who you are in a different way, um, then do that. Um, Christmas can mean a whole lot of different things to a whole lot of different folks. And this year, I think there will be a much different, different perspective on the year for many, many people. But those are going to be my final words. And I am going to paint them on my bathroom mirror. Awesome. I think you should. And then take a picture of it and send it to the rest of us. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Yeah. Gentle with yourself. You have been reminding me that and it says it is something I'm working on as well. So thank you. And yeah. <laughs> what was it was you got for us, sister? Um, just a, um, a short thing. I, I've been thinking about something that Tammy, who is off the screen right now, said, I think last week about um, the power that we have as women especially when women come together. And I'm all about speaking to our male audience as well, but I'm pretty sure we mostly have a female audience as or as, of, as it stands right now. Um, but just like in this time where so many people are searching and wanting to like belong and wanting to, you know, just to feel loved and welcome that women um, in our receptivity, like the power that we have to, to nurture and create like a safe and warm environment like that, you know, I'm just reminded as we like share here, like the power of woman, the power when we step into who we are and we like learn, like I'm learning more and more to open my heart so that my heart can be a home to people who need a place who need a home, you know, and just um, it's like the more we fully embrace that, like how, how much power is there in that? So. That's all I wanted to say. I'll close with going out with a bang. Yes, <laughs> um, so beautiful. I think you know, as women, we're nurturers, and um, you know whether we have biological children or not. For those of us that, like my husband and I, that had infertility, for those of my single sisters here, um, that you know God still calls us to bear life, and we do that you know through our presence, through our love and through our hospitality and letting people enter in. So um, we're all called to that. So, all right, let's turn the mic over to Alyssa and you can share, kind of usher us out um, with your thoughts. Yeah, so I've been hanging out in the comments this whole time. Um, so if anybody wants to see like my traditions, you know, you can look at my blog coming out like this upcoming week or so. So you'll get to see my traditions. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool listening to everybody's traditions because as I'm getting older, I'm going to be um, forming my own traditions. 
And so I'm really like taking what everyone's saying and kind of keeping it close and probably be able to do that later on my own. And it's so exciting. Um, yeah, I just have been struggling um, as well with anxiety and worry. And I know the, the ladies have been helping me out with that um, about being present. So um, I guess my words of advice would be present in everything that you're doing for the holidays and just being present and worry free because I am trying to do that very much, especially now, especially with um, how much worry we're having, um, trying to plan the holidays, even around COVID and trying to take everything into consideration. Um, but yeah, just trying to be present is my thing. So thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, because that that's just, I think, something that, that we all go through, right? You know, it's we're all trying to do that. And um, some advice that we had talked about when you were sharing that struggle um, amidst the team was just like, you know, to ask yourself, in, what am I doing right now? And then what it is that you're doing, which is like right now we're talking with you, <laughs> is that we're present to that. And that's where we stay focused, you know. And so there's a chance then to when we're done with this, then we'll get on to the next thing. But if God's calling us right now to, um, you know, these are my moments right now for shopping, I'm going to shop. You know, these are my moments right now to um, do the Jesse tree with the, with the kids. Then that's that, you know, next week. Um, you know, time with my mother-in-law, that's what I've got to focus on, you know, is making sure that she's comfortable and taken care of. So I think we all, um, you know, need to realize that, that God's given us the grace for right now and we're in this moment and um, let's live in it. And each day, let's continue to proceed through Advent um, with that spirit of, okay, today, this is what you've given me. This is the grace for it is in right now. And so let's, you know, let's enter in and take advantage of that. So I love all the things that you, um, you've you all shared. Um, and I really appreciate everybody being here with us. And then for those that are watching this um, replay, um, which is available through podcast and be on YouTube, and we'll share that across the socials, is awesome. So don't forget um, about our downloads, that the links are over there. And Alyssa also was awesome to post um, some other links. Um, like to the books, and that's also in um, in our uh, download as well. We put we put those things in there. Um, I hope that you guys will um, continue to journey with us throughout Advent. Um, we're going to be posting all kinds of things throughout the season to be um, focused on, you know, Thanksgiving, Advent, the holidays, all of that, um, to be able to journey with you guys through this time. So we post um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can catch our blogs and join us on. Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all the socials um, to, to continue um, journeying with us. So uh, with that said, ladies, um, we all, you know, come together to wish you a blessed and happy Thanksgiving, you and your families, as well as a, um, a blessed Advent. And um, good night, and we love you all. So God bless.